Utah American. And I am Ben Karen. And uh, at one point in my life, I was named St. Ansgar High School and King. So we are both uh, winners here. We are both pageant winners. Um, yes, equally decorated pageant king and queens. Be the crown, Ben. Be the crown. I am being the crown. Well, tonight we have an incredible roster of talent. And it takes so much courage, as you know, to get up on the stage. But we are braver angels, after all. Yes. So tonight is going to take so it's it's going to be a lot of courage that is being exhibited by our fellow delegates here tonight. You're going to see parts of your delegates that you maybe never thought that you you'd see. You know, um, people are going to reveal hidden talents. They're going to reveal parts of themselves that maybe are very courageous or vulnerable to reveal. And so, what we want to ask you tonight is, as braver angels and in the ethos of braver angels, are you prepared to cheer, to shout? to holler, to uplift your fellow delegates and make them feel so excited, so supported, so happy to perform tonight. I believe you, I believe you, beautiful. Well, let's get started. All right, let's get started. First up, we have Angel Eduardo performing an original song. Please help me welcome Angel to the stage. Make some noise. <laughs> Hey everybody. Uh, I actually, thank you. So they asked me what I was going to play uh, a couple weeks ago, and I said, I don't know. And is it okay if I don't decide until I get here? And I said, it'll probably be something I wrote. But the vibe since last night has been interesting. And I'm really just, I'm really into the, the spirit of why we're here. And this song came to mind, so I didn't write it. But I think it's, I think it fits. Can we get some guitar? One sec. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, there it is. Let us be lovers, we'll marry our fortunes together. I've got some real estate here in my bag. So we bought a pack of cigarettes, and this is Wagner Pies, and what's all to look for America Kathy, I said as we boarded a Greyhound in Pittsburgh Michigan seems like a dream to me now it took me four days to hitchhike from Saginaw. I've come to look for America. Laughing on the bus, playing games with the faces. She said the man in the gabardine suit was a spy. 
I said be careful, his bow tie is really a camera. Me a cigarette, I think there's one in my raincoat. We smoked the last one an hour ago. So I looked at the scenery, she read her magazine, and the moon rose over and over. And fears. Kathy, I'm lost, I said, though I knew she was sleeping. I'm empty and aching, and I don't know why. Counting the cars on the New Jersey Turnpike label. Come to look for America. Oh, come to look for America. They've all come to look for America. It's for Angel Eduardo! Beautiful. I love that song. So tonight's going to be in flow. We're going to find it together. Everything is perfectly on time. And sometimes when there's extra time, we're going to fill that time. And coming up next is Doug Teschner, who is going to be doing some storytelling. Where is Doug? Where are you at, Doug? Beautiful. Hi, Doug. You want a hug? Let's hug. Your mic is there. Yeah, you can handhold. Here you go. That's for you. That's all right. That's what I'm here for. Doug Teschner, everybody. So, so you hear me? All right. You know, if, if you were at the thing today, whatever that was, by Patterson Cafe, you know I'm from New Hampshire, although I grew up in Massachusetts. And the reason I ended up living in New Hampshire because when I was a young boy, I was at summer camp and they took me up to the White Mountains and I became enamored with hiking and being in the mountains. And I was blessed in my life to climb a lot of big mountains in North America and in Africa and Europe. And in 1976, my friends, we went to climb Mount McKinley in Alaska. And by the way, that was the centennial year. And you know, we're coming up on the 250th, this is in two years something we ought to think about with braver angels. It's been pointed out to me by a friend of mine. That's some, a theme we ought to be looking at. But I was, that bicentennial year, I, I was on Mount McKinley 48 years ago. And when, after 30 days on the mountain, we were on the glaciers. I got down to Fairbanks. I went to a place called uh, a saloon and a guy heard a guy tell this story. I said, that's a heck of a good story. I'm gonna learn that story. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. And the Arctic tales have seen queer tales that would make your blood run cold. And the northern lights have seen strange sights. But the strangest they ever did see was the night on the marge of Lake LaBarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Now, Sam McGee was from Tennessee where the cotton bloomed and blowed. He roamed around the coal hole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. On a Christmas day, though we'd often say he'd soon to live in hell. On a Christmas day, we're mushing away over the Dawson Trail. Talking of cold, and the park is full and stabbed like a driven nail. For eyes we closed, the lashes froze. Sometimes you couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee that very night. It was really packed tight. 
and a rose beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed and the stars are head, were dancing heel and toe. He turns to me and Cap says he, I just can't stand this cold. I wish you would honor my last request. Well, it seems so low, I couldn't say no. He says with a sort of a moan, it's the cursed cold. It's got right holds on chilled with me to the bone. Yet it ain't being dead. That's my awful dread of the icy cold, cold that pains. I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. Well, pal's last need is the thing to heat, so I swore it would not fail. We started on the streak of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched in the sleigh and he raved all day about his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death as I hurried, horrid, driven. With a corpse half hid, I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. I looked at it and thought of it and looked at my frozen chum. And I said, oh man, I've got to find a crematorium. Well, pal's last need is a thing to heed. I swore I would not fail. And on we went, and the dogs were spun, and the drub was running low. And, and so we came to the marge of Lake LaBarge, and a derelict, an old boat lay. I looked at it, and I thought a bit. I looked at my frozen chum. Then here, said I, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. I saw some planks from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler flower. I found some coal was lying around, and I heaped the fuel just higher. The furnace roared. The flames just soar, such a blaze you seldom see. Then I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Well, I made a hike, because I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled, and the, whisk, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to glow. And the greasy smoke in an inky cloak went streaking through the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear, but the stars came out and danced about arrogant I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked. And it's time I looked, and the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar. He wore a smile you could see a mile. And he said, please close that door. It's warm in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. Well, there's strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moy for gold. And the Arctic tales have seen queer tales from like your blood run cold. And the northern lights have seen strange sights. But the strangest they ever did see was the night on the march of Lake LaBarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Thank you. Let's give it up for Doug Teschner. And uh, who wants to walk me back to my dorm tonight? I'm feeling a little creeped out. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right, thanks again, Doug. Next up, we have Eric Bronner, who will be performing Build Me a Bridge. Woo! All right, let's see if I can figure this out. There we go. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. Can you hear that okay? My name is Eric Bronner. I'm the uh, relatively new to Braver Angels since December. I'm the founder of Veterans for All Voters and we're part of the Braver Angels Network. This has been absolutely fantastic. I'm originally from Wisconsin, honored to be home. And this is a little, a very simple song I wrote about five or six years ago in the middle of a little bit of a midlife crisis. Kind of offered it up as a prayer. Build me a bridge from here to there Don't know how to get where I'm going Build me a bridge to a place of peace filled knowing Cause when 
storm blows through, I want to be with you. Yeah, when the storm blows through, I want to be with you. Build me a bridge up to the sky. Bring some of them stars down to earth. Build me a bridge to the place of my rebirth. Cause when the storm blows through, I want to be with you. Yeah, when the storm blows through, I want to be with you. When the storm blows, where the wind goes, when the storm blows, where the wind goes, no one knows or cares. But won't you take me there? Build me a bridge. To the end of time When all things will be right Build me a bridge To the place where faith is sight Cause when the storm blows through I'm gonna be with you Yeah, when the storm blows through I'm gonna be with you when the storm blows through, I'm going to be with you. When the storm blows through, going to be with you. Won't you see me through? Hey! Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So I, uh, I live in Los Angeles now, but I grew up in the country in, in, uh, in a little farm town in Iowa. And when I was growing up, I loved country music. And this next performer is going to be singing one of my all-time favorite country songs. Please help us welcome to the stage Ronnie Lynn. <laughs> a good start, maybe. <laughs> Some grace tonight. <laughs> this is actually um, a very special song to me. Uh, it's probably the most special song I've ever sang. It was the very first song that I sang publicly. And um, I didn't know that people couldn't sing. I thought everybody could sing. So... Um, I did it to break out of my comfort zone. I wasn't trying to win at the Warren County Fair that year, but um, found out something and went from there. And this song has um, carried me through so many things. And so I hope that it can touch anybody in here tonight in the same way that it has touched me. Loved him like he was the last man on earth. Gave him everything she ever had. He'd break her spirit down, then come loving up on her. Give a little, then take it back. She'd tell him about her dreams, he'd just shoot him down. Lord, he loved to make her cry. You're crazy for believing, you'll ever leave the ground. He said only angels know how to fly. She keeps an eye over the sky With the broken wings She carries her dreams Man, you ought to see her fly 
one Sunday morning, she didn't go to church. He wondered why she didn't leave. He went up to the bedroom, found a knob out the window with the curtains blowing in the the sky with a broken wing she carries her dreams and you ought to see her play with a broken wing she carries her dreams man you ought Wow, that was incredible. Did you feel that in your soul the same way I did? Oh my goodness, girl, take us up to the ceiling. All right, next up we have Trish O'Toole who will be performing a poem. I want to thank Mark for having me follow that. <laughs> I wrote a poem about my mom who lived to be 96 years old and she had decided to donate her body at her death to the anatomical gift program at our local teaching hospital. Well, my five siblings and I were a bit disconcerted at the idea of her being poked and prodded and dissected, but we did decide to honor her wishes um, when we were told that the cadavers were treated with the utmost respect and that the medical students were so grateful for the opportunity to learn in this way. We also knew they were gonna keep her body for two years and then return her to us, her cremated return remains to us. We were told that the names of the deceased were never shared with the medical students. And I don't know if they gave them numbers or if they made up names, but it bothered me. I, the thought of turning my mom over to them anonymously and them not knowing who she was really bothered me and compelled me to write this poem. Um, I guess I think here this week, we respect one another more when we know something about each other, right? So um, it's kind of the braver angel way. Um, and I wanted the students to think of my mom not just as a body to learn from, but as a person who had lived a full life and to consider her as much for how she lived as for how she died. So that as doctors in the future, they would look at their patients, not just as bodies with physical ailments, but as whole people. So I called the poem, Her Name is Joan. Behold, her name is Joan. You see an aged face, lifeless. I want you to know her life was full. She was full of life. You see blue, blue eyes. I want you to know those eyes beheld a childhood lived through the depression, a lifetime with six siblings only six years of a father's love. The strength and spunk of a mother who kept her family together. A post-World War II marriage with 65 years of Raymond's love. The birth of eight, two gone before held. 96 years of joys and sorrows. You'll notice a slightly large nose I want you to know that nose could detect the faintest of scents 
and surely sniff out a lie. You see faded lips. I want you to know. Those lips hummed a thousand tunes, kissed foreheads and toes, taught us proper prayers, spoke endless truths with humor. They were the lips of a true storyteller. You see ears, just ears. I want you to know those ears listened to a mother's lessons, sibling secrets, a husband's love, children's concerns, joys and sorrows of friends, and always music. You see frail arms. I want you to know those arms held love, gave love. They rocked babies to sleep. They wrapped around a husband, parents, brothers, sisters, siblings, daughters, sons, social workers, ambassadors, veterans, so on. You see gnarled hands. I want you to know those hands made uncountable meals, held bouncing babies, petted dogs and cats, created things of beauty, picked up toys and tissues, held friends and were extended to strangers. Those fingers drummed a thousand tunes. You see legs, just legs. I want you to know those legs danced and danced. They danced on TV and taught dancing to others. They walked in America, Ireland, and Russia. Those legs once rode in a submarine. Those toes tapped to a thousand tunes. You see a heart, lungs, muscles. I want you to know the size of that heart knew no measure. Those lungs possessed a great spirit. The strength of those muscles was no match for the strength of her soul. Even in death, she wanted to help. She is of service still. She is a teacher with lessons inside her. She continues to teach. She wants you to learn. I want you to know she has a name. Her name is Joan. Thank you, Trish. What a, what a beautiful homage. So coming up next, we get to feature our amazing house band tonight. Brent Morden and Frank Filicomo are going to share a song with us now. So make some noise for Brent and Frank. And uh, first of all, can we give some love to Ben Karen and Stacy Proctor, our amazing MCs? And uh, I want to shout out our guitarist Frank Filicomo and Jefferson Shoop on the drums. Give them a bit of a hand. We're just going to share a quick, uh, uh, short and sweet jazz tune for you all. There will never be another you. See, uh, while Frank sets up here, I'll, I'll uh, bide my time. Uh, we, we both hail from New York City. Give it up if you have a New York relationship at all. Great city. They call it the Big Apple. Uh, we've played together before. We connected through, through events and politics in New York, and we both realized, wow, we're musicians too. This is incredible that uh, music brings people together, and now we're here at Braver Angels. There will never be another you. Short and sweet. Here we go. There may be other nights like this And I'll be standing here with someone new There may be other songs to sing Another fall, another spring But there will never be another you There may be other lips that I may kiss but they won't fill me like yours used to do I may dream a million dreams But how can they come true If there will never, ever be another you? Frank Give it 
Jennifer Ooh. Frank, everybody. There may be other lips that I may kiss. Oh, but they won't fill me like yours used to do. Yes, I may dream a million dreams, but how can they come true if there will never ever be another you? Yes, I may dream a million dreams, but how can they come true? If there will never ever be another You know, jazz is a life skill, right? You have to be comfortable improvising and takes incredible techniques. So let's give these gentlemen another Woo! round of applause. All right. And next up, we have Miles Eddy, who will be juggling. So bringing a little bit of lightheartedness, a ball of all colors. Woo! All right, ladies and gentlemen, hip, hip. Hooray! My name is Miles Eddy with the hat on. I am Sebastian, juggling jester, professional fool, unlike you amateurs. <laughs> I have a story to tell you, but first I'd like to show you a trick. Watch close, goes quick. Okay, hold off on the music until we get to the story. All right, here we go. Quick trick. Oh, not quite the reaction I was hoping for. <laughs> Well, there we go. All right, all right, all right. Now you know what I'm looking for. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to do another trick for you. And if you like it better than the first, you know what to do. Here we go. Hip, hip. Hooray. Woo. That was pretty nice. Now this trick right there is called a flourish. One third of the big trick. Two thirds, same thing, other hand. Throw in a triple. Woo. Put it all together. It looks like this. Hop. There's one. There's two, there's three. And that's not enough applause. One more time, hip, hip, hooray. So ladies and gentlemen, I have a story to tell you. Music softly, please. Once upon a time, there was a ball of all colors. And the ball of all colors had a grand old time. And then a ball of some colors came along to play with the ball of all colors. They would chase each other and had a grand old time. Until one day, the ball, something remarkable happened. And the ball of some colors split into two and became a ball of blue and a ball of red. Well, the ball of all colors was thrilled. More perspectives to play with. Until one day, and I don't know why, but the ball of blue and the ball of red decided they wanted to play with someone more like them. So they kindly asked the ball of all colors to leave so they could play with the ball more like them and sometimes the ball of some colors would play with the red and sometimes with the blue and it was okay until one day the ball of some colors decided hold on a sec there we go so the ball of some colors So the ball of some colors decided that it was really a ball of blue. Well, this freaked out the ball of red. Ah! <laughs> and, and before long, the ball of all colors was re-entering into the pattern, trying to bring order into the chaos. 
Yeah. And the ball of some colors was saying, I want to play. And they all tried to play in their own way until they were all trying to occupy the same space at the same time until it all came crashing down. Which brings us to why we are here today. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Miles. I am a juggling for peace. One more cheer, hip hip. Hooray, thank you. Ah, I can do this. There we go. Woohoo! Thank you, everyone. Miles, every Eddie, everybody. I really think that technically it's not actually a talent show until somebody juggles, because otherwise it's a concert. And so this made it officially a talent show. Make some noise one more time for Miles Eddy, for his amazing talents. So I just want to say really quickly about this gentleman who's coming up here. This is Trey Carlisle. Make some noise for Trey Carlisle. He is the head of an organization called Music in Common. And I just want to give a shout out to Trey that... I don't actually, I, I met Trey just for the first time at this convention, and in all the people that I have met through this entire uh, convention, the hundreds of people, this is the warmest person that I have ever met. Truly, you walk up to him and he is giving total love to every single person he makes eye contact with, and to me that is exactly what the Braver Angels way is. And so, not only is he an incredible, incredible musician, but he's an embodiment of what this organization is all about. And we're so excited to have him here tonight. Make some noise for Trey Carlisle. Thank you for a lovely intro, man. I, I'm blushing now, thank you. How's everybody doing? Ah, nah, 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 see, see, it's Friday night. We had a talent show, we about to party. We have Braver Angels, so I'm gonna ask it again so we can get the energy up a little bit higher. All right, <clears throat> how are y'all doing? Now we talking. I love it. So lovely to be with y'all. Yeah, again, my name is Trey Carlisle. I go by the name of MC Poetre or Trey the Troubadour. And uh, I'm grateful to be able to share with y'all um, a song uh, that I reimagined. Um, it is a protest song that was sung during the civil rights movement um, called Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Round. And I reimagined it as a letter to my future grandchild about what we did in the present day to pass on a better world to them. Um, because one of my favorite quotes that I really take to heart is, the world is not something that we inherit from our ancestors, it's something that we borrow from our children. And so this song is about what we did in the present day uh, to pass on a better world to the future generation. And um, I hope y'all enjoy. And because it is built off of the song that our ancestors sung that paved the way, um, please sing along with me in the parts that you know. Sounds good? That sounds good. Let me hear y'all say, yeah, yeah. Let me all say, oh, yeah. All right, DJ, cut the beat. Hey, keep it again from the top. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching on the freedom land. All right, let's get it going. We cannot let nobody turn us around Turn us around Turn us around We cannot let nobody turn us around We're marching on the freedom land My grandchild 
By the time you read this letter, I hope that you are living in a world much better than the one that I write from. We got a lot of problems, and I don't know if in my lifetime we will resolve them. But that's why I wrote this letter to you. Because you are the entity that gives me energy to keep defending this world and these truths we hold is self-evident. Even when we're told we're irrelevant. Yo, cause every day we see pain and we hear cries, yet we still turn a blind eye. And I despise and explore how much we ignore. The truth is like a room full of elephants. But I'm telling this story because I want you to understand what this world once was before we took a stand, before we made our demands. Do not take for granted what we did to make this world a better planet. We did not let nobody turn us around. Turn us around, turn us around We did not let nobody turn us around We're marching on the freedom land My grandchild, hope in your time Nobody knows what it means to walk down the street afraid of police I hope nobody's a foe, but you and me and everybody has come together in unity I hope your kids grow up in healthy communities I hope that the environment with its flowers and its trees Rain showers and bees are not devoured in seas But rather grow more and more beautifully I hope nobody grows up in the town where they can find drugs easier than find jobs Hope nobody blows the candle off their birthday cake alone Cause their family's behind bars I hope nobody knows my sorrow And though it's true that nobody knows tomorrow We have to do our part to make it better than today We have to change our hearts so we can live a better way And we cannot let nobody I can't hear y'all, what we doing? Turn us around I can't hear you, yo we cannot let nobody what yeah we're marching on the freedom land and so my grandchild you cannot let no you cannot play a part in this cycle of oppression that has made this world a mess right from the get-go fear evil greed and all the feebleness leading us to do evil just let go because we cannot get no satisfaction. If we continue this course of action, a love for division will be a fatal attraction. People will say your problems are too big. It's you against the world. What you gonna do, kid? But once your whole life has passed you, in the end they're gonna ask you what you did to take a stand when the future was in your hands. So you gotta do all you can to give the next generation a better world than you had, like I did for you. Love granddad. We cannot let nobody turn us around. Sing it with me, yo. Turn us. Sing it with me, yo. We cannot let nobody turn us around. We're marching on the freedom land. Sing it loud so the whole world can hear it, yo. We cannot let nobody. I can't hear you, yo. Everybody sing. We cannot let nobody turn us around. We're marching on the freedom land. Now everybody sing, sing, nobody. 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 Everybody time to say nobody. Let me hear you in the back. Nobody. Everybody, let's say nobody. One more time, let's say nobody. No, thank y'all. Appreciate you. Trey Carlisle, everyone. Yes. Trey, thank you so much for reminding us how connected we really all are. Not only do we have our friends right here with us, but we have those who've come before us and those who will come to follow. So thanks again, Woo. Trey, for that. Yes. Oh, oh. I'm so mesmerized. I'm, I lost my train of thought here. All right. Next up, we have David Eisner, who will be performing a bit of magic for us. Can we give it up for David? Come on out. Hello. I'm David Eisner, and I have decided to reprise uh, my old identity, Mr. E, uh, for Braver Angels. I haven't done this in 
40 years. But I've been moved by uh, everything that I've seen. And in particular, this idea that two individuals that are so different from each other can find ways to come together and to make things happen that are extraordinary. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about that. So what do you do when you don't have enough rope to bring an R and a blue together to tie them up until they understand each other? Well, the first thing is you need more rope. So what I try to do is come up with as much as I can. And I think we're going to need to bring a red and a blue volunteer up. Let's do this fast. I see you put a hand up, red or blue. Do we have a red? There we go. Come on up. Hi. What, what's your name? My name is Camille. Camille, it's great to meet you. Nice to meet you. And hello, what's your name? I'm Emmy. Emmy, it's great to meet you. I have gifts for you. <laughs> now, you got, can you hear me without the microphone? Yeah. Are we good? Now, if you stand right about here, no, face that way, and you stand right about here, face that way. Now, point your scissors. That's not exactly <laughs> what we're looking for. What I'm trying to do, you don't need to point the scissors anymore. I'm going to stand here, and you're going to do some cutting. And I want to first make sure that you realize this is a normal, regular piece of rope, okay? So now you pull it over here, pull it over there. Does that work for you? Is that real rope? Yep. Broken anywhere? Nope. All right. Now, together, what we're going to do is turn this rope into two equal pieces of rope. That's, is that the middle? Mm -hmm. Seem right? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut. Can you cut that? And then we'll have to do a little bit of adjusting. Now, so it looks to me like we don't have two even pieces of rope. Will you even that out a little bit? Perfect. So we've got this one, we've got this one. Great. So we're totally even. <laughs> I'll tell you what, can, can you, um, uh, uh, Emily, will you cut that to be even? Here, I'll hold it. Great. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay. So now, <laughs> you know what? Let's try this a different way. We're going to do is tie these together. And what I need you to do, cut that end off. And now you cut that end off. Now blow on the knot. And what we're going to try to do is get these two pieces exactly the same. Did that not work? You know, I'm really a little bit um, perturbed here. I think what I'm going to do is try this one more time. Um, but this time, just to make it fun, we're going to do three even pieces of rope. So we'll start with this, do that, and then we're going to... Um, take this, huh. and then we're going to need to even it out, and now you cut there, you cut there, and you did it. We have one, two, and three pieces of even rope, and so now what you get to do you get to take one of them, you get to take one of them, and I will take one of them, and I will show you an amazing trick. So take one, three, 
eat. You take one. <laughs> what happened? All right. Now look. Okay. Now, what we've, what we've really got to do is figure out how we can turn all of these into the same length. And I think that's going to look like, no, it's not. It's going to stay three different pieces. You know what I'm going to do? Because I think my time is up. I'm just going to call this a miracle. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I have, wait a minute. You can, you can, uh, let me take your scissors. Don't run with these. <laughs> tell you something that David Blankenhorn shares with me. I want to show you the power of two David Eisner, everybody! See, now, now it really is a talent show because we've got juggling and magic and this amazing talent that we've so, seen so far. Are y'all having fun so far tonight? Great. We are over halfway through and we've got a lot of magic left tonight and this next act is, to me as a musician, is going to do something that has always seemed like magic to me. He is going to freestyle. Coming up next is Kieran O'Connor. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Friday night. Uh, we're going to do a little live jam session, improvised, little freestyle rap. Um, so maybe I'll lay down a beat, and then maybe the drummer can come in on it, then maybe Brent can lay a melody, and then, you know, maybe some of you guys can throw out some words. I can rap. We can go from there. Uh, how does that sound to everybody? Yeah! Okay, okay, okay. Let me see what I got. How about, like... Something about what we're doing with Braver Angels. What? Peace. 
All right, we got peace. Let me get another word. What? Debate. All right, we got peace and debate. Uh, yo, we need peace in the Middle East. See me, I'm a beast. Look at my pants, ain't got no crease. Yeah, what the T is, what the free is, who you be is. I like to freestyle, I be wild, I see smiles. Ain't no debate, ain't no hate. Why you so irate? I'm great, get a taste. Ain't no tasteless, no racist. You gotta face this. Uh, yeah. All right, okay, okay. All right, let me get another word. Flag? All right, we got flag. Let me get another one. What? I can't hear the middle here. What? Oh, we got flag and home. All right, I need one more. Oh, all right, flag, home, and hope. Ah, uh, yo, we need hope. I watched the debate last night, I was like, nope. Yeah. Shit had me feeling like it was dope. But I looked up and saw the flag, and I was like, dag. We need to come together no matter the weather. I feel so untethered, we gotta do it better. I'm clever, I'm smart, it's hard. But we're going home. We're all under this dome in the chapel. It's sweet like an apple. Yeah. All right, that's all I got. Thank you guys. All right, that's the kind of brave angels we want. They can take anything that's thrown out of it and make something fabulous. All right, next up we have J.M. Uh, Arlene, J.M. Grant, who will be singing Lovely. Woo! <laughs> Sang publicly in a long time, so this will be fun. Um, I'm going to sing "Lovely" by Billy Irish with Khalid, and I have karaoke backing me, so hopefully it will be enjoyable and lovely. <laughs> Ready? It takes all night or a hundred years need a place to hide, but I can't find my fear. Isn't it lovely? Although hard made of glass, my mind of stone tear me to pieces in a bone. Hello, welcome home. Walking out of time. Looking for a better I think this is a different version. <laughs> Looking for a better place. <laughs> Something on my mind. Always in my head space. But I know someday I'll make 
Beautiful. What's that? Well, it was lovely regardless. It was lovely. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Coming up next, we have some stories from Mark Beckwith. Mark Beckwith, come on up to the stage. I live in New Hampshire which is a state next to Maine. And for those of you who are geographically challenged, it is the Northeast state of the country. It is the only state that is touched by only one other state. Do we have any maniacs here? Well, Maine is known for its stories, a whole raft of stories, its unique accent, its self-deprecating wit, and that wit has a wisdom that may take you a few moments to understand. Mr. Perkins came down to me and asked me if I build him a new privy. Well, I said, certainly, Mr. Perkins. Where was he aiming for to build it? He said, over on the east side a lot, by the lilacs. Then it'd be most pleasant in the spring. I said, certainly, Mr. Perkins, it's your privy. So I got the hole dug and Mr. Perkins come out and he said, so I've been thinking small about this privy of mine. If we build it over here on the east side of the lot by the lilacs, it'd be awfully far for fo folks to travel during the winter months. So I think if we move it over to the west side of the lot by the chestnuts, it'd be much more convenient. Well, Mr. Perkins, I said, it's your privy. Well, I took down that hole, I filled it in, started at a new privy, and I got as far as the floorboards. And Mr. Perkins come out and he said, Sai, I've been thinking small about this privy of mine. If it's over here on the west side a lot, by the chestnuts, what with the prevailing wind been from the north-northeast and the house standing just due south-southwest, it could be mighty uncomfortable for the women folk in the kitchen during the summer months. So I think if we moved it halfway between the lilacs and the chestnuts, it'd be much more convenient. Well, Mr. Perkins, I said, it's your privy. So I took down that privy and started on a third privy and got as far as you might call the interior decorating. And Mr. Perkins come out and he was all het up. He said, con it hot, Cy. I told you to frame this privy up as a two-holer and you've rigged her as a one hola. Well, Mr. Perkins, I said, it's your privy, but say you had to come out here late one evening, pressed for time. By the time you made up your damn mind, which one of them two holes you was gonna use, it'd be too late, that's all. My cousin Hiram left East Unity, Maine to go down to Boston to do a bit of studying. And when he came back up a year later, he was all het up about this new socialism. So I asked him, hi, Ron, does that mean socialist? You mean share and share alike? He went, hey, yeah. 
That's what it means. I said, well, hey, uh, Hiram, if, uh, if you as a socialist, if you had two goats, would you give me one of them goats? Hey, yes, yes, sir. I give you one of them goats. How about if you had two hogs? Would you give me one of them hogs? Yes, sir. As a socialist, I give you one of them hogs. Well, how about this, Hiram? If you had two cows, would you give me one of them cows? He looked at me with a cold eye. Damn you, Virgie. You know I got two cows. Last story. My cousin Hiram is some kind of dumb. You may know my cousin Hiram. He runs the drawbridge over the Kennebec River up there to Bucksport. And he's been raising and lowering that bridge for about, oh, 15 years. And he wants to expand his horizons, so he wants to run for mayor. Well, he don't deserve to be mayor. And I want to tell you why. I got another cousin, Enoch, who has a farm just upriver from the bridge. We grow some corn, has some chickens, and has a prized bell uh, cow named Bell, who puts out the most and the best milk in the valley. But one summer, I think two years ago it was, Bell took sick. She couldn't take nothing in and wouldn't put nothing out. She began to look a little peaking. So, uh, so Enoch decided he was going to give her an enema. Problem was, he didn't have anything to give her an enema with. First, he tried his wife's roast beef basta, and that didn't do no good. Then he tried the oil funner from his John Deere tractor, and that didn't do no good neither. Finally, he took the mouthpiece off his son, son's trumpet, and he figured it figured up, fit up there just as snug as he please. So he went out in the barn and placed it up Bell's hindquarters, and I want to tell you, it gave her a bit of a start. And she took off out of the barn, ran down the drive, up the road, toward the bridge, as fast as her spindly legs could take her. And with all that flouncing and jouncing, the gas that had been inside of her had had to come out, and it came out through that trumpet. And I want to tell you, it's, she sounded just like John Philip Sousa himself. Well, you may remember Hiram. He was working the drawbridge at that moment. And he heard Bell coming down the road, up the drawbridge, and he thought it was a steamboat. So he raised up the bridge, and Bell kept her running up over the bridge, fell into the river, and drowned. So I want to tell you, anyone what don't know the difference between a trumpet stuck up, stuck up a cow's ass and a steamboat coming up river, don't deserve to be mayor. Gentlemen. Mark, we have the Timpanoga Storytelling Festival in Utah. Maybe something you would want to come, come perform at. Um, next up, we have Ron, Mc, or excuse me, Ron McFarland, who will be performing This Little Light of Mine. Brave angels, okay? Yeah. So meditate on these words. This is my heart, sugar bear. If you think a song can't change the world, but still you find yourself humming to a tune, let's sing together to make a difference. Today, we're not just sharing a melody, we're igniting a movement. This little light of mine, a beacon of hope and solidarity during the civil rights movement, calls to us once more. Its verse isn't just a line of a song. It's a step closer together as brave angels, a bridge over divides. This song is about more than just words. It's about action. It's about lighting up the dark corners of indifference and illuminating paths to understanding. 
So wherever you are, raise your voice. Sing from the balconies. Wow. Show that our collective light can outshine any darkness. Join in, sing loud, and let's let our little light shine. Together for America, after all, united, one heartbeat, as one. Strong, underdivided, let it shine all the time. Baby, let it shine. Here we go. Join in with me. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, yeah, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Yeah, all around the neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Yeah, now, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Oh, one more time. I got one more little verse. Here we go, we do this. In my brother's home, yeah, in my brother's home, yeah, I'm gonna let it shine. My brother's home, I'm gonna let it shine. In my brother's home, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Amen. Sugar Bear! Yes, Sugar Bear. Yes, thank you. Your voice sounds so beautiful that I could listen to you read a CBS receipt. That's how much I love it. Anything, telephone book, whatever you want, you could read. All right, up next, we have Bruce Fox, who is going to give us a little comedy. Give it up for the band and for yourselves for staying up late. All right. Um, you might recognize that song from Rocky. In the movies, the statue at the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum and the O on my shirt here, he strikes the victory pose. And, you know, we heard that the polarizers might be winning, but we're gaining on him. And I think we got to believe, we got to believe it's going to happen. So just... Right now, you can sit if you want. If you can, stand. Strike a victory pose for me, please. Envision. Envision the victory. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You can sit. And, and uh, you know, we did that now in case the jokes aren't funny at all. We at least... We did that, right? And it's going to be really hard to follow that comedy duo of Biden and Trump. They got a lot of laughs, right? So, um, Brave Angels has meant a lot to me and make some noise if it's made a lot, meant a lot to you. 
that's no joke. That's no joke. And so I have depolarized within. And at some point I realized that I've been through something like this before. And so I'd like to share my story of how I learned to love, not pray for the deaths of the Dallas Cowboys. Any Dallas Cowboys fans? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So there's something uh, famously rabid and intense and tribal about us Philly sports fans. Uh, we don't always live up to that name, City of Brotherly Love. And it could be because, I don't know, maybe we have a chip on our shoulder. We used to be the nation's largest city. Philadelphia used to be the capital. Or maybe there's something in the wooter, which is Phil Philadelphia English for water. Yes, thank you. Okay, so... Uh, you know, uh, Eagles fans once famously threw snowballs at anyone? Santa Claus. Good old St. Nick. Phillies fans once threw batteries at an outfielder. Batteries. Is that the Braver Angels way? No. There were so many unruly fans at Veterans Stadium, the home of the Phillies and the Eagles, that they built a jail in a courthouse at the stadium. And so I was born into this. Well, not into the, the jail or veteran stadium. That would have been the best bragging rights for a Philly sports fan ever. But I was born into the fandom. And uh, not at a particularly good time. Because in the years before I was born, the Flyers several times, the, the Phillies, the Sixers, they all won championships. But then... After, when I was born, it was like I was cursed, and the first quarter century of my life, zero championships. And so it was very hard. It was very hard. Uh, so come, come back with me to the, the 1990s, southeastern Pennsylvania. <sighs> and uh, football was the most emotional. It was the most emotional. Any Eagles fans? Yeah? Yeah! David Lapp, do it with me. E A G L E S. Eagles! All right. Okay. Go birds. Okay. So anyway, the, uh, the big rivalry was with the Dallas Cowboys. And for some reason, they were called America's team. And I used to always say, oh, really? Because Philadelphia was the birthplace of America. The Eagle, national symbol, Dallas is where they killed my favorite president, Kennedy. So, you know, I used to wonder that a lot. What's up with that? What's up with that? Somehow, uh, despite all of my cheering from the couch, the Dallas Cowboys won the NFC East in 1992, 1993, 1994, 1995, 1996, 1998, 1997, New York Giants. Any Giants fans? Yeah. <laughs> All right, but, but, um, but at least they're in the East. I used to always say that, right? Dallas is not in the East. The NFL needs a geography lesson. They shouldn't even be in our division. It's not fair. And so it was very hard and, uh, you know, didn't like the Cowboys. My mom, mom didn't let us say sucks. We couldn't say this sucks, but somehow my five-year-old sister had a t-shirt that said Dallas sucks. We had a Christmas tree ornament that said, Merry Christmas, Dallas sucks. And, uh, you know, foreshadowing the red-blue tension in the family of my, in my adult life, there was a blue-green tension. Uncle Jerry and, and two cousins, Emmy and Rachel, somehow they were Dallas Cowboys fans. It, it, it didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. And so on this one particular day, I'd like to talk about and many other days too. The Cowboys beat the Eagles. And Uncle Jerry would call. Bring! Bring! Sometimes we didn't pick it up. But we picked it up. <sighs> Hi, Uncle Jerry. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm, that was some field goal. <laughs> Here's Dad. Anyway, uh, it, was, it was rough. It was rough. And on this particular night, 
was feeling low, had the Sunday night blues, had to finish my homework. The Simpsons was a rerun, watched it anyway, of course. Upstairs, brush my teeth, floss. Just kidding, didn't floss. You can't floss when you're sad. Anybody floss when they're sad? When you're sad, you're not gonna floss. There's no way, there's no way. Uh, and so I get into bed and, uh, you know, I, um, well, I get into bed and I, I devout Catholic altar boy. I do the now I lay me down to sleep prayer and then I, you know, count my blessings. I'm not feeling very blessed because of the Eagles game. Feeling like Job, if you know Job in the Bible. Um, but, you know, pray for my family, pray for the country, pray for the world. And then this next part's going to sound bad, because it's very bad. I prayed that the Dallas Cowboys die in a plane crash. I know. It's, I know. The only thing I'll say in my defense was that I made it clear that I wasn't play, praying for an additional plane crash. The logic was, unfortunately, planes crash. And so if a plane has to crash, it should be these evildoers, the Dallas Cowboys, instead of all these innocent people. That was the thinking. That was the thinking. And so uh, anyway, plane didn't crash. And years later, the uh, Dallas Cowboys guys now retire. They show up on TV. They're analysts. They're announcers. They're wearing suits and ties. Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, uh, Jimmy Johnson, the coach, uh, Deion Sanders, Michael Irvin. I start, I, start to, I start to see them. And, and then an epiphany happens. And this is gonna, this is gonna sound good, because it is very good. Troy Aikman, the old quarterback, says he thinks the Eagles are gonna win this upcoming game. He says a lot of nice things about them. And my mind exploded. And I thought, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe Troy Aikman and these other guys are People. H human beings. Like, like the eagles. Like you. Like me. And it was, it was, it was an epiphany. And, you know, I, start, I started to realize, you know, we are all created equal. You ever hear that? Yeah, and I started to realize that we're all in this together. We all have the same rage and sorrow when something happens. But we also have the same joy and wonder and all of the messy and beautiful things that come with being human beings. And so I learned all of these things from the Dallas Cowboys. This is a lesson that has stuck with me. This is a lesson that um, I've learned from, and it's a lesson that you know, I'll never forget. And so I, I want to end with hope because this is the theme of the convention is hope. I hope the Cowboys never win another game in, in, that they ever play. I hope they lose all of the games. But also, I hope they have very safe air travel. Their families are well. They're healthy. They know joy, their grandchildren, inherit a better world. I want all of these things for everyone, even the Dallas Cowboys. And so if a Philly sports guy like me can come to that conclusion, I think there's hope for all of us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Well, I'm, I'm taking away two big messages from that. Number one is we're all in this together. And number two is I don't have to floss my teeth if I'm feeling sad. So, yeah. All right. All right. Well, we are coming. We are nearing the end. We're not quite there. We've got two more uh, quick performances. And uh, so we're very, very excited. Next up, we have Francis Collins, who will be performing, if not now, tell me when.
Well, you all are pretty durable here, and I'm going to make you sing. Uh, this is a song that seemed particularly appropriate for Braver Angels, and I'm honored to have been part of Braver Angels now for two and a half years. And so the chorus of this, well, the main, it basically, all you got to know is six words, which also happens to be the title of the song. If not now, tell me when. You've heard people say, well, you know, we got this great idea, and if you did this and we did this, then something wonderful would happen, and somebody would go, well, you know, it's not really the time. Well, if not now, tell me when. And certainly that's what we try to do in Braver Angels, is to get past all of those objections and do something to bring us all together. So here's the chorus, and then I'll get you all to sing it with me, and then I'll do the verses. And the last verse is uh, sort of special for this evening. If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment or place in time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Can you sing that? If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when We may never see this moment Or place in time again If not now, if not now, tell me when I see sorrow and trouble in this land I see sorrow and trouble in this land Although there will be struggle, we'll make the change we can. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Chorus. If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment or place in time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. I may never see the promised land. I may never see the promised land. And yet we'll make the journey. We'll walk it hand in hand. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Chorus. If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment or place in time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. So we'll work until it's done. Every daughter, every son. Every soul that ever longed for something better, something brighter. We're braver angels, there's nothing we can't do. We're braver angels, there's nothing we can't do. The one the world's been waiting for. Look around, it's me and you. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Last chance. If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. Oh, we may never see this moment or place in time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. If not now, if not now, tell me when. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Francis Collins, everybody. All right, we are getting very close to the end of our evening. We have a treat for you all. The, up next is our artists in residence for this convention, Sons of Serendip. And as they are getting ready to come up to the stage, I want to take a moment and invite everybody who has performed tonight to stand. Round of applause for all of our performers this evening.
Beautiful work, everybody. Also, can we take a moment to thank our sound crew, our lighting crew, our video crew, our house band. Thank you all so much for the ways that you've served this evening. And we also want to thank all of y'all. Thank you for being so supportive of everybody tonight. Round of applause for all y'all. I know it's late. You're here. You're cheering on your fellow delegates. It's really beautiful. So we thank you so much for that. And so now, without too much more ado, maybe I'll vamp a little bit more. Um, great. Where did I get the jacket? Um, it's a little website called sheen.com, which I think is, is actually like a controversial fast fashion uh, um, thing. So thanks, Cameron, for calling me out. Uh, it comes with matching pants. I didn't bring them. I thought maybe they'd be too much. Were they... What, maybe maybe it was just enough. Should I have had the pants? Yes. Should I have had the pants? Shoot. Okay. Pants. Next year, I promise you, if they ask me to do anything close to this, you'll see the pants with the jacket. Yeah? Does that sound right? All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. Sons of Serendip, everyone. Thank you. I'm just going to take a quick moment and introduce you to the members of the group. So first off, on the... On the harp, we have Jamori Simmons from Atlanta, Georgia. On the cello, we have Cremaine Booker from Nashville, Tennessee. And on the keyboard, we have Cordero Rodriguez from Charlotte, North Carolina. And my name is Micah Christian. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, but live in Los Angeles. Oh no, um, could we have a little bit of the piano and the monitor? Perfect. And so tonight we're gonna do um, one of our favorite songs of all time, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. And we would love to invite you all to sing along during the chorus. Um, there's something special that happens when a group of people sing together from the heart. David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this The fourth, the fifth Minor fall and the major lift The baffled king Composing Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Baby, I've been here before I know this room I've walked this floor I used to live alone Before I knew ya Seeing your flag On the marble launch Love is not a victory march to cold and it's a broken hallelujah 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 
touch I told the truth I didn't come to fool ya even though it all went wrong stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my lips but hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Thank you. Spirit dip, everyone. Wasn't tonight wonderful? Woo! That's that's the most beautiful arrangement of that song I've ever heard. That was truly stunning. Wow. Thank you so much for blessing us with that. Well, tonight we laughed. We cried. We heard a story about a cow and a trumpet. <laughs> uh, but we want to thank you all for coming tonight. And, and thank you so much, Ben, for hosting this show with me. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's been so fun to work with Stacy. Stacy Proctor, everybody. Make some noise for my co-host, Stacy. Yeah. Truly, truly beautiful inside and out. A pleasure to work with you. And again, let's well let's thank our bravest angels. Yes, our bravest angels and performers this evening. So um, we wanted to end to end the night with something special. Um, so uh, I don't know if you all know, but the Music Man Foundation is one of uh, the major funders of Braver Angels, and um, the Music Man Foundation was started from the um, the the profits of Meredith Wilson who wrote The Music Man, and weirdly, in, in some weird synchronicity, I grew up exactly where The Music Man was written, where Meredith Wilson uh, grew up, and in the, basically in the town that he wrote The Music Man about. So there's this weird sort of synchronicity about that. 
And when Mark, who planned this show, heard about that, he suggested that we, we do a little uh, selection for you from The Music Man tonight. Um, Stacy and I both kind of came up in musical theater and we thought we would close tonight with our own little goodbye to you. So this is our good night to all of you. Good night, my love. Sleep tight, my someone. Sleep tight, my love. Our star is shining its brightest light. For good night, my love. For good night. Sweet dreams be yours, dear. If dreams there be sweet dreams to carry you home to me i wish there may and i wish there might so good night my someone good night true love can be whispered from heart to heart when lovers are parted, they say. But I must depend on a wish and a star. If only my heart didn't know who you are. Sweet dreams be yours, dear, if dreams there be sweet dreams to carry you close to me i wish there may and i wish there might so good night my someone good night good night good Thank you all so much. This is Braver Angels Got Talent. Sleep well, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning.